The hardest thing about being an artist is being multi-passionate, which especially feels like a curse in the age of the internet, where there's constant pressure to niche down or find your style. Or if you're anything like me, you're overwhelmed by all the things you could do and don't have time for. Hello, and welcome back to my channel. I'm Mia Dragon, and I'm a multidisciplinary artist who loves all things cute. My interests have changed a lot over the years. For at least a decade, digital art has been my primary focus. Even in college when I had to take like 3D classes and painting classes, I really was very resistant to learning traditional mediums. And so I had a pretty narrow scope of like what it was for me to be an artist. However, once I started my professional career, my relationship with digital art changed drastically. I often felt immense pressure to impress my supervisors and directors with my work in the hopes that I would be moved on to another project. My personal art practice really kind of came to a screeching halt once I started working in cartoons and the joy that I once found in digital art really diminished. I still found myself judging my own work as harshly as I did my professional work. So after I realized how much my professional lens really affected the work that I was doing outside of my job, I thought, hey, it might be time to really spice things up and try a different approach. Nowadays, I still do digital art Art, but I really like working with my hands. It really takes me out of that need to strive for perfection and instead I can just embrace my imperfections and realize those things add charm to handmade creations. Really just wanted to get to a place where I could just enjoy the creative process instead of judging everything that I make with like such intense scrutiny. If we could just be real real, the job market sucks right now. I definitely could be applying for jobs biting my fingernails and hoping somebody reaches back out to me. That could be my unemployment. It has been before. But instead of being doom and gloom, I really just want to focus on enjoying myself. Things will all work out in the end, but for now, I'm going to spend some time focusing on my hobbies. So welcome to the series called Too Many Hobbies, a series where I try everything because the only thing consistent about me anymore is that I love all things cute. So this is my hobby box and I have so much art supplies in here. But I think the thing that we're gonna be focusing on today is this punch needle. I've been wanting to do punch needle for a while now. I've got that amazing yarn wall behind me and I really only used it to do amigurumi. Punch needle work somehow felt more difficult to me. I just put it off forever and, and the supplies just got stuck in my hobby box. So we're gonna be trying it today. We're just gonna see how it goes. Now I wanna preface this with I'm not about to make the most technically beautiful piece. And it's gonna be really difficult for me, but I also just wanna preface that just in case you're expecting me to make this wonderful piece of punch needle work. This is my first time trying it. And I really want to just try the hobby just to try it and see if it's something cozy and something I would recommend to a friend. So at the end of this process, I'm going to be rating this hobby on three things. Affordability, was it fun? And was it easy to learn? I think I've yapped enough, so uh, let's just get into this. So design-wise, I decided to just recreate my strawberry sticker. This is one of my favorite designs in my shop and I thought it had the potential to look really cute as a little tufted piece. So supplies wise, you're going to need an embroidery hoop, a punch needle, some monk's cloth, scissors, and obviously some yarn. The first step to all of this was hooping my fabric, which was honestly a journey in of itself. I had the absolute worst time trying to hoop my fabric. The first time I did it, it seemed to be okay, but you'll see later on, I struggle a lot with the fabric slipping out of the embroidery hoop. I did try to tighten it to the best of my ability, but the little screws on top actually stop at a certain point and it gets really difficult to screw or tighten the hoop anymore past a certain point, which was really Really frustrating because I felt like the hoop needed to be tighter to keep the fabric taut but for now just rolling with it. 
Next, we needed to get my printed design transferred onto this fabric. Kind of an interesting problem because I didn't have a light box or really any light that was strong enough to show through the fabric until I realized I could just use my box light for tracing. So don't mind the weird setup, we're being creative. I just layered my drawing onto the box light through the monk's cloth and traced out the details. So I ended up going back over this with a Sharpie because I found one and <laughs> I needed it to show through, you know, both sides so I could punch it. But um, I'm really bummed because this design doesn't mirror that well. So I'm hoping that it doesn't come out weird looking when I finally like punch through it all the way, but we'll see. So here's strawberry. Learn from me, mirror your designs. And so with all the initial prep out of the way, all I needed to do now was thread the needle and get started. So an issue I kept running into was my fabric coming undone out of the embroidery hoop, which was really frustrating, especially when I was in the middle of punching something and the hoop slipped and the fabric went everywhere. It was just, oh, it was very annoying. Oh, I had looked into binding my hoop, but I didn't really want to sacrifice the hoop just for this project because it seemed kind of like a permanent solution. So what I did end up doing instead was using these chipped bag clips to clip the fabric down on each side and it helped a lot. Before I wasn't sure how much I could even really gauge the enjoyability of punch needling because of the fabric slipping but after I came up with this it was a lot more smooth sailing. Here is, this is where I was working, and then here's the front. I gotta obviously snip these little pieces here, but yeah, this is how it's looking so far. So as I went on to punch in all of the red here, I realized that I probably should have started with at least an outline on the body, the eyes, and the cheeks, for lack of a better term, establishing the line art here. Because working back in the details of the strawberry after I started to punch in, the red was very difficult. And luckily, I will say that this is a really forgiving craft, so I was able to just undo loops and redo things, so I really enjoyed the fact that it's kind of hard to make like a permanent mistake with this like all right the only way to chill is to be drunk all the time but that's you're that's not that's that that's a yeah. path exponentially downwards this looks so crazy This is the end result. And I think it turned out really cute, actually. The only thing I would have done differently besides, you know, craftsmanship is maybe 
done a different color for the face details. I didn't have like a darker red to more closely match my sticker, so I just opted for black. But uh, yeah, it was really fun. I have to say, I was really worried when this first came out of the hoop because I just wasn't sure if I would be able to save it. Looking pretty demonic, so I'm happy with how it came out after I did a little bit of sculpting. But my overall thoughts about punch needling, let me start by saying it's definitely affordable. We're talking like under $50 in materials here. So the overall cost isn't much of a barrier to entry. I did find it very relaxing and fun to see the design just gradually take shape over time. Although I won't lie, like I said before, I had a lot of issues with the hoop and the fabric slipping out. And at first that was like really coloring my experience. I saw people online recommending using plastic hoops, Q-snaps or fabric huggers to help keep the fabric down and secure which obviously I ended up doing. I just ended up using those chip bag clips to help hold the fabric down a little bit more. So if you run into this same problem trying to do this yourself, those are some options worth considering. I didn't really think the learning curve was really that steep at all. You could definitely pick this up over the weekend really quickly without getting too frustrated. And finally, would I recommend it? Yeah, for sure. This was such a meditative craft for me. It was very repetitive, so I just kind of found myself getting lost in the motion for some hours. Had some therapy get go on in the background and it was fun. I actually started working on this on just a not so great day. It was kind of blah. It just really helped take my mind off of things. So yeah, I'd absolutely recommend trying this easy and fun craft out, especially if you're looking for something that's relaxing. I'll link some of the craft supplies I used down below in case you'd like to try this out for yourself. Thank you again for watching and I hope you enjoyed the video. I would absolutely love to hear your thoughts and feedback in the comments down below. And if you have a craft that you've been wanting to try or would like me to try, I'm definitely open to hearing that. Again, just let me know down below. I'm always looking for a way to unplug and make some art away from the computer. If you'd like to support me in creating more videos like this, I do have a Patreon with four different tiers with exclusive content and perks, which I'll link down below. And you can also find my social media link down below if you'd like to keep up with me. And I think that about covers it. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye guys.